In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very good morning, everyone. Would you like to be seated for a moment? And um, we're going to light our Advent wreath once more this morning. So first of all, I'll light our first candle that we lit last week when most of you were in bed avoiding the snow. Okay. And then I invite uh, young Eileen, would you like to come forward? I can bring it to you. Okay. Brilliant. You can blow that out, make a wish. Oh, Paris together. Okay. (laughs) Did Alan know about this? So our second Advent candle this morning um, represents faith and love. And so we ask the Lord to bless our Advent candles on our second Sunday. The, we travel around the Advent uh, wreath and of course next week is the third Sunday, the middle point of Advent. It's going so quickly already. And um, of course that's in pink. And then in the middle, we've got the white candle, which we light on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, so that uh, for the coming of our Saviour. So let us stand. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. We welcome all visitors that we have today. Um, We have visitors from um, Ireland and all over the country. We have a new parishioner from uh, Belper. I've checked his passport. And also uh, we welcome those who are watching online as well. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. (laughs) Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. 
Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say, say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arm subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother ewes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our, hand, in our land. Let, Let us, us see, O Lord, Lord, your mercy, and give mercy. us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let, Let us, us see, O Lord, Lord, your mercy, and, and give us your saving help. help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and, and give us, us your saving help. The second reading is a reading from the let second letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow, but he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then with a roar the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart, and the earth and all that it contains will be burnt up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living a holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised. The new heavens, the new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It was written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I'm going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. They confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you like to be seated? A very good morning, everyone. Most of us have maybe been on a retreat sometime in our lives, even if it was, um, it was called a holiday. I've been on many retreats, I've been on many holidays, but when we go on retreat, the whole point of it being called a retreat is because we retreat from the world. We can go to monasteries or convents. Also, um, I don't know, uh, like uh, Alan at the front here, um, his retreats are the Maldives every year, you know what I mean? But wherever your retreat is, we know that at the very beginning of the retreat, it takes a, a couple of days for um, all of our worries, all of the trappings of life, all of the busyness of the world to leave us, we have to shake off, um, shake it off, as one of the pop stars says, shake it off. And so we have to shake it off, and of course, then we start our retreat officially. Sometimes we, once we've started to relax on our retreat, all of that pain of how we keep ourselves all tense all the time starts to come out as well. And we, we, we start to sleep a lot on retreat as well. And this happens when we're on holiday as well, doesn't it? We start to relax after a few days. So we, we retreat from the world, whether it is a holy retreat or a holiday. In the time of Jesus, their Jerusalem was a busy place. They had been occupied and ruled by the, the Romans. There was the temple culture and synagogues. And so you had different sections of society. You had the poor, of course, everywhere. But there was Pharisees who worked in the synagogues and temples, the scribes who taught. You also had the priestly family who uh, uh, worked on the, in the sanctuary in the temple. You also had a group of people called the Sakari. The Sakari, the word Sakari means knife, and they used to carry a knife with them. And they were what we might call in modern terms uh, freedom fighters or terrorists. They would try to undermine the Romans and fight against the oppression. We also had another group of people, and they were called the Essenes. And the Essenes, they decided that the world and its trappings and the busyness and all the trouble that came along with Jerusalem as well as the, the temple was too much. And they decided to go into the desert and they became a desert people, dwelling in the desert, just like John the Baptist. Um, the the uh, people think that he must have been a part of the Essene group. John the Baptist, he wore fur because it's, of course, cold in the, in the desert in the, in the nighttime. He also lived not on barley and wheat and grapes and lamb, but it said he lived on locusts and honey, things that were naturally available in the wilderness. But John called people to the River Jordan. John called people to the desert. He said, you need to prepare a way for the Lord in your lives. Last week, weekend, on the first Sunday, we were asked to stay awake, stay alert. This Sunday, we are being invited to prepare a way for the Lord. And in, in Isaiah, who spoke about in his writings, in his scrolls, the coming of Emmanuel, the coming of our Savior, he wrote about prepare a way for the Lord 
fill in the valleys and flatten the mountains so that all of these ups and downs of your life may be flattened out because we want to see past all of the difficulties we have in our lives and to prepare a way for the Lord, almost like a, a runway. We want to place a runway in front of us so that the Lord may land in our hearts. And so we have to spend time in prayer now that we, this past week, maybe we've been running around and writing letters to Santa. We've been um, uh, um, touching base with uh, companies like Amazon, and Amazon are rubbing their hands together. We also, of course, some people have been putting their Christmas tree up and their lights opening their advent calendar, a chocolate calendar, um, and see what they've got this today. But whatever we've been doing, it's all been busyness. Have I ordered the turkey? Who am I inviting for Christmas Day? Or where am I being invited to? Now we're being invited as we've entered Advent, and we need to become people of prayer, of spending time with the Lord. So maybe this coming week, each day, you could have a mini retreat each day. Whatever, you are, whatever you're doing, walking to school, whether you are sitting in your car, whether you are having a coffee in the lounge, turn the TV off, turn the radio off, and have a coffee with the Lord. He's into cappuccino. And so, of course, have a coffee with the Lord. Just give the Lord five minutes each day and have a little bit of a, a retreat from the world to prepare a way for his coming. We don't want to get to Christmas Day and think, oh, I've not prepared at all. I've, I've prepared everything else, but I've not prepared myself spiritually to receive the child Jesus into my life. So this is a time of preparation. Next Friday, we will be inviting you to come and sing carols at our carol concert during the week, uh, I'll be putting a Christmas tree up in here and setting up the nativity scene so that we can start to focus once more. From the 1st until the 16th of December, that's really a time of trying to separate and retreat from the world and get into the right groove of preparing Jesus for Jesus' coming. From the 17th, it becomes a very much a, a countdown towards Bethlehem, towards Mary's yes to becoming the God-bearer of our Lord Jesus Christ and, of course, the journey to Bethlehem. So we start from the 17th to journey in that way. So we ask the Lord to be with us and maybe to just give the Lord a few minutes of your time each day. You are not in a convent and you are not in a, a monastery but you are, you, are, you are immersed in the busy world. How can you retreat? But you have to maybe just give the Lord five minutes. I don't think that's too much to ask in your busy lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we stand and pray? Shall we say together today the Nicene Creed? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father, on this, the second Sunday of Advent, you invite us to retreat from the world and be prayerful people, preparing a way for the Lord in our lives. Lord our God, we pray for those in particular need who are weak and vulnerable. We pray that they will be touched by your gentle tenderness, bringing them comfort and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, in this Advent season, we pray for your church throughout the world. We pray that she will indeed be a herald of good tidings speaking loudly of your glory revealed in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the nations of the world and their leaders. We pray that in all hostile, unjust and troubled parts of the world, the way may be prepared for you to bring equality, healing and justice to all your people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in particular today for the people of the Holy Land, where Jesus, the eternal word, became flesh, came to live alongside us. Let your Prince of Peace bring a new spirit of reconciliation among those who have brought division, suspicion and danger into the streets of Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those of our parish family whose anniversaries are around this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we are about to enter a new week, we ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Finally, let us pray for, first of all, uh, for Marie Hop Hop Hopkinson, um, who has just had an operation and recovering, so we ask the Lord to be with Marie. We also pray this coming week, um, this coming week we have two funerals, one here for Bob Hilton and also one at Alfreton for Sandra Johnson. So we ask the Lord to watch over both of them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, we ask you to be with our families in this coming week. May we be close to each other and love all of those that we meet, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to be seated as we prepare our altar this morning. Thank you, Phil. Um, shall we sing hymn number 158? Gifts of bread and wine, gifts we've offered, Fruits of labor, fruits of love, offered, sanctified, blessed and broken, words of one who died. Take my body, take my saving blood, gifts of bread and wine, Christ our Lord, Christ our Saviour, living presence here. On earth, oh God, give you for all. 
time, I am with you in this bread and wine. Take my body, take my saving blood, gifts of bread and wine, Christ our Lord. Through the Father, with the Spirit, one in union with the Son, for God's people joined in prayer. Faith is strengthened by the food we share. Take my body, take my saving blood, gifts of bread and wine, Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Mass intention is for yourselves and your families here on earth and in heaven. We have two special uh, intentions today. Firstly, it's... Um, uh, the anniversary of the death of Deacon John Haig from um, Hassop. And so we ask the Lord to be with uh, Deacon John and the banquet, and we remember Elizabeth and the family this day. We also pray this day for a special child, Oscar, who has passed away at the age of three. So we pray for his family, uh, and Claire Parker and family would like to remember young Oscar in their prayers. So we ask all the angels and saints to watch over that young child. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated or kneel. Eucharistic prayer three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. We especially pray today for Father Paul Newman, who on Thursday uh, by Bishop Patrick was made a canon of the cathedral. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Shall we offer each other the sign of peace by bowing, handshaking, or if you're married, you can kiss each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ, you know? The blood of Christ. In a moment, myself and Sheila will distribute Holy Communion. Uh, the precious blood is available from Sheila this morning as well. Um, as we have no side aisle, we come in a certain order. So if you're a visitor to our church today, you're most welcome. Just to relax and you'll be cut, guided forward shortly. We also have gluten-free hosts. If you're gluten-free, let me know as you come forward. And if you don't normally receive communion in the Catholic Church, still come forward. Just put your arm across your chest and that will let me know you want a blessing instead. It would be my great honour to give you the blessing. Thank you. Before that, shall we send a spiritual blessing of communion to those who are watching online. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with our sick, our housebound, and those from around the world. On this a second Sunday of Advent, let us prepare a way for the Lord from our hearts in our prayer life. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Shall we sing hymn number 70?
Just uh, one or two notices this morning. There is a uh, tea and coffee in our hall next door. You're most welcome. There's chocolate biscuits, fresh uh, percolated coffee. Um, it's not that bad. Okay. It's actually quite, tastes quite nice, actually. Um, so you're very welcome. There is a uh, bacon, sausage, egg, chips, beans. No, there isn't, there isn't, there isn't. There isn't. Um, this coming Friday uh, is, um, there is no Friday Mass, but this coming Friday is our Christmas carol service. So please support your parish uh, as we come together. Um, the, the Saturday evening music group from our young people um, are leading the way this year. So this coming week, uh, myself and Lucinda will be putting the nativity, sen- set, nativity scene up and also our Christmas trees and so on. You also, in your bulletin uh, last week or this week, have received a, um, an envelope for Christmas flowers. Please um, bring that back, or if you, there might be some spare at the back if you need one. So um, Christmas flowers, uh, so that Beryl and her team can make our church look wonderful as always. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the gambling of the Catholic Church will start next week. We will start to sell our raffle tickets for the Christmas hamper. Also, you could bring baby basics for our Lady Chapel uh, when you go shopping. We always have basic baby basics for those young mothers, newly uh, made mothers who are struggling. And it's a, a Chesterfield charity. This coming Wednesday is Robert Hilton's uh, Requiem Mass. So please attend. Uh, you're all very welcome indeed. And so we keep him and the, uh, everyone in their prayers. Um, Father Paul was made a canon. Father Paul was, I think, the parish priest here from 95 to about 2000. It was his first parish, his parish priest. And so I think he became a canon because he was here, of course. Um, but I, was, I covered the briars for him on Thursday night while he was at the cathedral. And just before I processed into a year seven mass at the Briars Youth Centre, the Briars team said that Father Paul's not here this evening because he's being canonized. And so, of course, when I went into the chapel at the end of Mass, I said, to be canonized, you've got to be dead. And so I said, Father Paul's very much alive. What can, being a canon means is that the bishop puts Father Paul in a really large canon and fires him <laughs> over the cathedral roof. And you could see some of these year sevens is he joking? So, so of course, uh, I wasn't joking. Um, so we ask the Lord to be with Father Paul. Finally, um, uh, if you're a visitor here, we don't have a basket going around for our collection. There is a, um, an offertory box at the back. We normally, all of us here normally give, I don't know, about 50 quid each a week. So if you want to give on the way out, you're most welcome. And uh, so I hope you have a good week. And don't forget the carol service. We need you here. Um, and after all of this COVID experience, it might be nice to come together for Christmas uh, carol service for a change. So that's great. Let us stand and pray. We welcome all of those who have celebrated our Mass with us today, especially those who prepared by welcoming, cleaning the church, decorating, even uh, year one and two of our school decorated the back wall with all the angels. So we ask the Lord to be with our school. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I was really conscious, we have loads and loads of Irish people here this morning visiting, and I understand that the Mass is almost four times the length of uh, here in the UK than your Mass, so I'm sorry to have kept you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So with great gusto, let us sing hymn number 224. (coughs) 
I don't know that one, so let's bear with me. Uh, if we had an organist, that would be good. So let's sing. Uh, Well done. Our God reigns. Louder. Our God reigns. 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 Last verse. Our God reigns. 